Okay, I want to show you what I picked up today, but first let's see if we can turn on some better sound. So I'm going to go ahead and hook up my recorder. And I'll go ahead and get her plugged in, turn it on. Let it spool up. There we go. Let's see if uh, that sounds any better. All right, guys, let me show you what I picked up today. So I went over to Ray Elko. I'll go ahead and just dump it out. All right. So I know you've all seen me use shrink tubing. So I picked up several different lengths and diameters of shrink, or several different colors and diameters of shrink tubing. So I always get about 10 each of whatever size I get, unless it's a really big stuff, then I just get five. I don't use as much of that. I like to use a lot of the clear, so I'm always loading up on the clear because it, it works in every situation. I use the colors for color coding as well as for protecting the wires and so forth. This will last me a little while. I'm, I, I tell you something, I feel really, really lucky to have Ray Elko right here in Salt Lake City, man. I mean, I, I'm spoiled. I really am spoiled. I got it made. And then uh, I noticed that there were certain ratings of um, fractional amperage fuses that I did not have in the slow blow style. And so I went ahead and bought some. I got 10 each, not a lot. Just enough to uh, get me underway. So there's a 0 0.2, so 200 milliamp, 300 milliamp, and 150 milliamp. But these are all good American-made, actually vintage fuses. These things are, um, these are, he calls them surplus. Okie dokie, let's get to work on this zenith. Now what we're going to do right now is string, a, put a dial string on. So I'm going to grab some dial string. I have a small selection. I, I'll be buying some more from Bob's Antique Radio soon. So here's where I get my dial string. Okay, Bob's Antique Radios. And he has different sizes, and he packages them in these nice plastic spools. Pretty cool. And uh, his prices are uh, surprisingly good. So it's worth getting them. Okay, you can see what I did. I ran the string through the slot here, through this slot, and then I tied one end to the spring. All right. Now... I'm going to take this spring and I'm going to poke it through this hole here. And this spring will provide the tension for this, this, uh, this dial string, see? Okay, so this dial string is going to go about three times around this pulley here. And that's probably out to about here or so. So I'm going to come out to about here. And actually, this dial string is supposed to go around the dial one time like that, okay? Then it comes off this side right here going that way. Then it wraps around the pulley, okay? And then it comes back to the dial like so and back through that slot and onto the spring. Now, I'm going to go around this pulley here inside about three times. So we'll say that's about here, all right? So that's going to be about that long. Let's add for the knot and maybe a couple extra inches for good measure just to be sure. And cut it. I'm going to wrap this around here. And this will drive me up a wall with coming off of here unless I put a little tape on here to hold that in place. Okay? That will drive me nuts otherwise. I'm going to take this string, go down through here. And... Uh, and get a hold of it with my pliers because that's the actually no get a hold of it with my cat and hook here and uh, just bring it out this way oops wrong side Okay, bring it down through the pulley here. 
All right, so it goes around this wheel once. See, it will, it will want to, the skinny string wants to jump off all the time. The skinny string is obstinate about not staying where you want it to be. All right, so now I'm going to have to go around this pulley three times. With that washer, it has to be up against the chassis. So the second one right here. And here we go with the third one. Okay, the three is all you need. All right, and then you're going to loop back down toward the big pulley on the tuning condenser. Doing a dial string will make you feel like the dumbest person in the world because it looks like the simplest task there is and it's one of the biggest pains in the butt there are with radios. All right. Now, you've gone around the wheel and now you're going to have to go back in the slot here and uh, this is hard because these want to get tangled up on themselves up here. So you have to be kind of careful how you go back down through that hole. And what you do before you tie the knot here, if you can, is you pull that spring up a little bit. You want to put some tension, some pre-tension on it, okay? And uh, it'll want to, it's going to be tough because you've got to get this knot, this string through the spring for that first tie. Once you get the first tie done, it's not too bad. But you've got to get that first tie done. Now you may have a way better way of doing this, this sort of dial string than I do. And if you do, I applaud you. Okay, so I don't need that much string on there. So you just use your pliers if that's your, your way. It's my way. And you want to kind of pull it, that spring, as you make that first knot. You, you want tension. See, if you don't do that, you won't get enough tension on that spring. And the stupid wheel will want to turn on you. There we go. Actually, I like a little more tension than that. It looks like a lot, but it's really not. OK. 
Okay, now you're going to come up through and tie another knot, and that will secure it. I don't know how much of this you're seeing, but this aggravates me enough that I'm doing it once. If it didn't show in the video, that's um, it, it, we'll just have to catch it next time. Cause this this one real this this job aggravates the daylights out of me. And I don't I don't want to be grumpy on video, so so it's better if I don't do too much of this on video. This is why you almost never see me do a dial string because it makes me grumpy as hell. All right, then you want to test it out, see? Okay, that's all the way closed for the gain. All the way open, so I think we might, we might actually be okay. It's a little tighter than the other one was, that's good. You will, you will notice that this string likes to bunch up in here, and there is absolutely nothing I've been able to figure out to do about that to make that not happen. It doesn't usually seem to affect how it works, but it does like to bunch up and kind of walk from end to end. And I don't know what I can do about it. Really nothing, I think. Okay, I have mentioned in the past that this is polyester string. And um, so with polyester string, if I put a little bit of modeling glue, testers modeling glue right there on the knots, it will bind that polyester material and prevent it from coming loose. And that's exactly what I'm going to do right now. And then I'm going to walk away from this. All right, time for plan B. I appear to be out of modeling glue. I, I did not know that. I don't remember running out. So lacquer will work just as well because the lacquer thinner will bind with that model glue and uh, or with that polyester and will kind of fuse it. I'm going to strengthen the lacquer thinner mix in my lacquer to make it work a little better. So. Let's uh, let's go ahead and do this. Just get a little bit on a paint, on a end of a screwdriver, and just touch it to that knot. Now, I know it looks a little odd, but trust me, it works. Now model glue works better, but lacquer will work too, and the lacquer actually will dry faster. So now that's a good thing. If you ask me, lacquer and lacquer thinner are two of the most useful chemicals ever developed. If it weren't for nitrocellulose lacquer, inexpensive furniture for the middle classes all through the, the 20th century would have been virtually impossible because that is the finish that almost every furniture maker adopted. Okay, I'm gonna let that dry. I am gonna nip off just the end of that. I don't like to nip off all the way up to the knot because sometimes this stuff likes to fray and I don't like to tempt fate. Excellent. So let's run this through one more time and see how it looks. Get that paper out of the way. See if you can see it. All right, it seems to be doing what it's supposed to do. Cool beans. We got other things to do on this radio, so let's put this to bed. Okay, let's, uh, let's dive back into this. We're gonna go ahead and put this bracket on. 
and uh, this is a piece of cake really it just sits right there and I've already installed a, a couple of star washers on the screws leave them a little loose because you're gonna need to adjust all this once you get it in place now I want to get this thing out of here okay the first thing I like to do is kind of get it in place by suspending it off of this bracket because that part's easy now what I usually do is I will tighten these top ones because the adjustment comes from the back the ones at the back here and these two front ones okay so I'll tighten these up because there really isn't any room for adjustment on these anyway we're going to do the bottom ones now. I'll put a star washer on the screw. Put that on a, one of the flat washers, one of the little fender washers. And just go ahead and eh, get this started. This is a two-handed job because you have to hold this in place while you get this, this screw started. Okay, now you don't want to make these tight because you want to be able to adjust it side to side and up and down okay I like to get it centered the, the my main measurement that I'm looking for the main thing I'm adjusting is that the, that the tuning shaft here the dial shaft is centered in the hole for it and then you tighten these bottom ones up first remember you're not putting lug nuts onto a semi truck so just tighten them snug but don't try to you turn it too tight you'll strip those screws those screws strip pretty easily so don't don't go crazy wrenching on them okay now you've got it centered here all you need to do is is uh cinch down these ones on the back before i hook these light sockets into their holes here on the on this plate i'm going to clean up i'm going to clean up the wires with a little bit of lacquer thinner I'm not going to go crazy on it, but I'm just going to try and wipe the surface grime off of them. I'll show you what I mean after I do it. You can really make, you can brighten them up nicely. It's like washing your clothes, man. It doesn't change the color, but it brightens them up. Remember, when they first, you know, when if you're doing a radio for somebody else, the first few minutes that they that they see the radio, they're going to look at everything. Now, they may never look at everything again. But those first few minutes are kind of critical. And I like those first few minutes to be sort of special for the person, if I can. Because often, like the radios I do, the reason people spend the money on them is because they belonged in the family since they were new. And, you know, I hear stories. Every single radio has a story. I ought to start telling those stories uh, along with the videos. I think I will. Because I like radio stories. I'm like John from Arkansas. I like radio stories. But back to my point, those people that have spent a whole bunch of money bringing their radio back to life and bringing back some memories in the process, well, it really helps them if the radio looks original but nice and clean and fresh and, you know, looks like it's supposed to look. They like that. Um, they don't want it to be changed much. Some people don't mind some change, but other people really do. And uh, but they want it to be clean. So now that's all I took off of the wire. It's not a lot, but it's enough to brighten it up. So when uh, when I put this back together, it'll be it'll look better. Now it, the, the, right now, until this lacquer thinner dries, this this wire insulation will look a little bit dark. But once it dries, it will be bright. And then I'll put the lacquer on it. Now the paper towel will have left little fuzzies on there. So you want to go ahead and brush those fuzzies off with your fingers. All right. Okay, so you get yourself a cheap paintbrush and your little mini bottle of lacquer. And you get your paintbrush good and wet. You set your lacquer out of the way so you don't drop it on and spill it on something. And then you start to brush some lacquer down the wire. And you see how it's sort of livening up that color. Now this is non-glossy lacquer, so when it dries, it's going to dry um, with, with uh, a matte finish. And you won't be able to tell that it's been lacquered. It'll just look nice.
end aside from looking nice it will protect that that cloth from from uh, breaking down over time because humidity and heat and sunlight if it's in the sun or whatever all kinds of things will break down that cloth insulation on that wire now it lasted a long time because it's not generally exposed to most of those elements but you know the older it gets the more fragile it gets and you want to kind of spruce it up make it stronger and that's all I'm doing here some people have kind of said hey man why you do you know lacquer on wire well yeah the manufacturers did that too that's uh, that you if you ever buy cloth wire that looks like it has kind of a coating on it that's lacquer that's lacquer now some manufacturers put like kind of a waxy coating on wire I've seen that too but not very often generally it's a special it's sort of a flexible soft lacquer that they've used I thought about trying shellac and, and I might do it at some point um, you can get de-waxed shellac that's clear that's what I use for sealing when I when I spray cabinets all right so this is working out nicely it's making them a nice nice cool yellow and that's what I want and it only takes a few minutes and literally you know maybe half a penny's worth of lacquer I'll tell you the truth about myself the reason I put lacquer in this itty bitty bottle is because I spill things I'm clumsy as an ox man and uh, that if I spill this little bottle well I've kind of limited my loss if I spill a quart container of, of fresh lacquer well that's a big waste and it makes a big mess all over everything so I'm just protecting myself from me I've always been sort of a clumsy person I was the guy who always I would spill my soda I remember in college I had a professor who hated to hear noises during his lecture and I like to sit up front because I have bad eyes so I sat right up front <laughs> and I would bring in a two liter bottle of Diet Dr. Pepper and a big glass a big plastic tumbler cup <laughs> and this professor who liked silence now would <laughs> would hear me open up if if I didn't think ahead and open up my two liter bottle before the class started and I opened it once it started he'd look up over his bifocals at me and give me the evil eye and I I'd swear he was going to leap out of his skin and come down and throttle me and then and then this is the best part I would I would start to pour my soda and it would make that fizzy sound you know and when it's coming out of a big plastic tumbler about that tall that fizzy sound is kind of amplified <laughs> and that guy I swear he gave me the stink eye every single time I did that but you know what I was the one paying for the class not him and there were no rules in the school against bringing soda into the class so he had nothing to say about it except to gripe now professors like to think they run the world but you can call them on it because I paid for the class not you dude and as long as I know my crap and I, I can pass the test you got nothing more to say but oh boy he, he hated that and he did one time look up at me and said, Mr. LaRose, uh, do you mind not making so much noise? And I, I looked at him and I said, it'll be done in a second, sir. And that was the end of that. And he never said another word. He just gave me the stink eye every day. And I continued to pour my soda. And I guess that's what happens when two stubborn people get together. Now, I kind of like that twist to stay in place. So while this lacquer is still a little wet, I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and twist it and that will kind of hold that that twist in these wires. And I'm getting lacquer all over my fingers, but it won't kill me. And then I'll I'll go ahead and put this in. I do this all the time this way. Go ahead and put this in now so that that lacquer will kind of take a set to I'll get it situated where I like it and that lacquer will set up and help hold that in that shape. So let me show you what it looks like from up top okay there's what I'm looking at from up top it's nothing special I'm gonna let that dry and then I'll put the eye tube on there while I have the lacquer out I'm gonna clean these wires and I'll probably edit this out of the movie or the video but I'm gonna clean these wires just in case I'll tell you what I'm doing and uh, prepare to put a little lacquer on them too 
I don't replace these wires unless I have to. There's not high voltage on them, so I'm not worried about that. The insulation is good. You know, it, we're not talking about stopping 600 volts here. So as long as it looks good, I like to keep it original because folks like original, man. Okay, now it's time to go ahead and clean up the wires on this tone control. And it's the same sort of drill. I'm not going to do much because I don't want to damage this, this cord, this bundling cord here. I'm not, I don't remember what it's called. Somebody told me recently and I can't remember. So I'm just going to gently wipe. I'm not going to go nuts on this. See, the colors actually are pretty vibrant when they're wet, and the lacquer kind of mimics being wet even after it's dry. That's all I'm going to do on that because I really, really don't want to mess it up. So, let that dry for just a second. Grab my brush, kind of brush off the fuzzies I put on it. See them flying off of there. wanting to come a little loose so just tighten it a bit I want to be real careful okay well it's tight like that now's the time for my good buddy lacquer where the heck did I put my paintbrush do you guys see where I set that down here it is Let's see, this black wire has already got lacquer coating on it, and sometimes I will re-lacquer them because that original lacquer, after 70 years, is kind of, kind of cracked and stuff. All right, guys, now I let that sit for about 20 minutes, and it'll be just fine. That will really liven up those colors when that's dry. Okie dokie, let's take this guy and uh, get ready to mount it. So let me go get an eye tube and I will install that. Okay. Okay, we're going to use this eye tube. It's branded as a GE. It's new old stock. I don't know if I see a date code on it. I'm, I never was good at reading those. I'm sure it's on the tube. Looks like 1959. Very cool. It's a new old stock tube. It's, it's an RCA, or I'm sorry, a General Electric, and it's going to work great. So I'll set it down there, and I'll get that cardboard tube for it. Okay, guys, I noticed that the battery is running low on my Zoom H1 recorder. And let's see, where did I set it? Here's that cardboard tube that just fits over the eye tube like so, and it kind of creates like a little light shield. It's really cool. And then, what you, so I, I, I just use that so I don't put a bunch of fingerprints on the tube right now. You got two big, the big pins right here. And I didn't say this before, but the large pins are the heater pins. And those are the two wires that needed uh, the help. Okay, so let's go ahead and, if I could... <laughs> If I could find holes. Let's go ahead and push that baby home. So what you do is just slip the eye tube right through here. And you don't worry about which way is up until later. Because you're going to have to turn it on to see, to make it perfect anyway. Goes through this, bra this little clamp. And then it slides through this cardboard tube. All the way. And then the plastic part, the base of the tube is what gets clamped in that clamp. And you push it right up against the opening in this deal here and then I don't tighten this down real tight but I don't want it falling out on me if I turn the chassis over so I'll tighten this enough to keep it in place there you go okay nothing to it guys nothing to it okay guys let's take a little pr look at a preview of what we're going to cover next time we're going to start to hit this uh, this tone control, and we're going to do the same thing with the station preset. We're going to clean the escutcheon. We'll take care of the, all the buttons and all the contacts and all that stuff. We'll make sure this escutcheon looks good. In the meantime, it's time to close up for now. This video is long enough. So I'm going to let you off the hook. 
And from your Western Outpost in Salt Lake City on Wednesday, August the 30th, this is Michael, and that's all for now.